Hey there, fellows. Right, it's that time of the year again. You know, when you have the opportunity to conduct a bunch of different experiments. And in today's episode, we'll be undertaking winter experiment number one. Here's what we have in mind. Right here, we've got a small pile of sacks, which contain rubble. Though that doesn't really matter. It could also be sand or cement, just as long as there's plenty of weight in them. Okay, so what exactly are we looking to do here? A while back, when I was driving one of my first cars, as you might have guessed, I used to have a rear-wheel drive Lada, which is sort of the go-to option in our parts, where a lot of people start. So yeah, that thing was rear-wheel drive, and during the winter you were always dealing with traction issues. Those weren't the easiest things to drive. Given that back then tires from Michelin, Nokian and other similar brands simply weren't available. I used to drive on Snezhok, and though they were studded, they didn't have much grip. Back then I wasn't aware of one very important thing. You can always load a car up. This is something I'm sure plenty of people know, that you can load up the rear axle and consequently increase the pressure on the contact patch. You know what I suggest we do today, fellas? We take a lot of, which has nothing special about it. I think we have a 2106 in there somewhere. We take it outside, where we have a steep incline. We'll start with no load, though on a decent set of tires. Definitely not the kind I used to have on my car. First we see how well it climbs without any load. Then we put a bit in. Then we put a lot in. And in the end, believe me when I tell you that this isn't all we've got. I'd like to try loading the car with up to 2.5 tons of these sacks, if they're even able to fit. I think this is going to be tons of fun. As for our incline, if you were to stop halfway up, you're going to have big trouble setting off again. We'll also check to see how a car behaves when you put in additional load, as in how much additional grip that's going to give you. I do think this lot is going to prevail. Alright, let's do this. And here's the reason we're throwing on some new tires. Because here's what used to be installed. These used to be winter tires, and most likely they weren't bald back in the day. So instead we'll be fitting a more modern set of tires. These are some Continental BDs with studs, which were highly sought after back in the day by those who dabbled in some winter drifting. This used to be considered really high-end rubber, but then some newer models started to come out. In any case, I'll be fitting these to the car, then we immediately try climbing up that incline. These are really good tires, but our incline, well, it might not look very steep, but if you stop in the middle, you're gonna have trouble setting off again. At first we'll try doing it without any load, we'll take some measurements, for which I've prepared a scale. The idea is for the scale to determine how much pull, how much weight, I'm trying to say how much force the rubber can transfer to the car in order to get it moving. We'll get a readout in kilos. I'm just super curious to find out how much we can gain in terms of force by adding additional kilos or maybe even tons of load to the rear axle of the car. I had enough talk. Time to throw these on and go try this out. So this car is also running a welded diff, meaning that the two wheels will be rotating at the same exact speed. We simply don't have any non-welded, any cars on hand where the diff isn't welded. Admittedly, you could say that we're cheating by using a welded differential, but I mean, what we really need to do is try this out, see what happens. I'd let the testing begin. We'll begin without any load in the back at all but on some good rubber. I'll drive a bit closer to the incline, and then... The engine still hasn't warmed up. Then I make a slow, smooth attempt at setting off. And see... if we have any luck with this. Carefully feathering the gas pedal. That's it, I'm done. You saw what just happened. That hill is pretty hardcore. If you stop mid-incline, even on a welded diff, the car seems to move forward if you're being careful, but then all you get is wheel spin. That's a tough climb. 
Now let's check to see how much pull that is in kilos. Now we find out how much pull it can generate. And the wheels are spinning. I'm forced to press down on the gas a bit harder, since the tuning of the carburetor isn't spot on. The car stalls at low RPM, though it does pull nicely. Let's go have a look. How much was that? How much? About 156. 156. There you go, fellas. The car is pretty much empty, no load, and it pulls 100 to 156. 156 kilos. Now we throw in one sack and see how that affects the reading. Loading it in. There we are, 50 kilos. Don't close that. Let's see where this goes. There we are, wheel spin. Okay, so one sack. Weighing in at 50 kilos made for a good increase in traction. Now look here. When the car set off, we saw an increase of 50 kilos on that scale reading. That's pretty decent. So for each 50 kilos, you get 50 kilos. Wait, so if we load one more sack, we'll have 100 here and see 100 there? That's what we're about to find out. But first, we need to try climbing that hill with one sack. Come on now. See that? I'm making my way up the hill, with no wheel spin, no nothing. One sack weighing 50 kilos makes for some fantastic results. Now the car has zero trouble going up this incline. Easy. Now we load in another 50 kilos. Straight into the trunk. And now we see what 100 extra kilos gives us. 100. Too bad the car stalls. Let's see how much that was. 324. How much? 324. But that was after you reached the gravel. Before that it was 296. Oh, so before the wheels made it to the gravel on the ground, yeah? 296. Holy cow. 156 on empty. 210 with an extra 50 kilos. And 296 with an extra 100. That's almost how it works then. Okay, so if we're looking at a situation when the more you load up the car, the more traction you have. Well, but I mean, that part was obvious. Here's what I suggest we do. I don't see the point of going to two and a half tons one sack at a time. So at the moment we've got two in there. Let's put three more in, giving us 250 kilos. Then we see how much, how much pull it'll generate with a load of 250 kilos. Instead of a spare. There we are. Now we've got 250 kilos in the trunk. We'll go back a bit as not to tread on the grooves we made. Then we see how much it can handle. There we are. I let off early, so that we don't dig into the gravel. What's up? 334. 334. 334 kilos from 250 kilos. Look at that. The more we put into the car, the more grip we have. The more torque is transferred, and the more sure-footed the car is when setting off. We're currently sitting at 334 kilos. In the beginning it was 156 kilos on an empty car. Okay. Who wants some exercise? Another five sacks? Let's go ahead and load up the entire... Then again, hold that thought. Instead, let's bring it up to 500. Meaning we'll add another 250 to the 250 that's already in there. And see what happens. I did notice I was pulling the Hummer. It's standing on that incline. Cool. Can you bring it back anymore? I just want to move the car away from these grooves. To see how much it can pull with 500 kilos. 500 kilos is half a ton. Which is a lot.
I won't spin the wheels too much. I've already dug in pretty deep. 368. 368. 368. How much was it before? It was 334. Alright, fellas, here is what's happening. Before it was 334, and now it's 368. That means that after 250 kilos, there is no point in loading the car up anymore. But half a ton doesn't seem like too much. So let's put some more in. Okay, we currently have a whole ton in the back of the car. Now we see whether it'll even move under its own power. Then again, we've seen Lada's drive with an even bigger payload. I'm at wide open throttle. Holy moly! I literally had the gas pedal pinned. You know what? Yeah, I was in there feathering the throttle. It wasn't budging, so I just gave it some beans, put to the floor, dumped the clutch. With 500 kilos, we had 368, and I genuinely thought that we weren't getting any higher than that. But after loading in another 500 kilos, all of a sudden we're at 600... 680 kilos. And change. The guys are saying that they missed the last digit. Okay, so... So here's where this seems to be going. That's 150 on empty. And 680 with one ton. Holy cow. But then, I mean, what's a mere ton when we've got another 1.5? Let's load up. How about another 500? Let's do this in 500 kilogram increments. This should give us a good result. What do you think? Why don't you pause the video and share your thoughts in the comments? Will this give us more pull if we throw in another 500 kilos? It's cool that we're doing measurements and all of that, but the thought occurred to us to try making it up that hill with the one-ton payload. Well, it is moving. Though it is having a tremendously difficult time. Instead of using the brakes, I'll be modulating the clutch. Stop here. And it is moving. It just doesn't care. Wow, look at it go! Now it's just down to a lack of power. But in any case... But I mean, look, even with this much weight on board... With this kind of load, the car makes it up the hill with no trouble. Okay, then, now the car is carrying 1.5 tons. Let's see... How much... How much pull we can get. It would be cool to see it drag the Hummer someplace. Grip is not going to be an issue, I reckon. The main problem is going to be a lack of power from the engine. It's having a really hard time. Can't even get those wheels to spin. It's not even spinning the wheels. Poor thing. How much? 800? It is seriously down on power, man. It won't even spin the wheels. There is just so much pressure on that contact patch, dude. With 1.5 tons of payload, those tires bite into the snow so hard. Even on the snow, that engine just can't get those wheels to spin. It lacks the power, plain and simple. But we did just see 800 plus kilos of pull. That's pretty telling, given that we started at 150. We still have an extra ton, don't we? You guys ready?
And here we see the result. 50 sacks times 50 kilos. We've loaded everything into the car. And now we do another test. Oh, it is so low. This is what I call stance. Let's do this. Oh my. How much was that? 800. Ain't having it. We aren't seeing any improvement. Why the long faces, guys? How much was that? Why such a bad result? Come on, engine. Five hundred. So here's the situation. Eight hundred, seven hundred, five hundred. So it was progressively getting worse. Why so? Well, I take it it's all down to the clutch overheating and burning up. Plus the engine probably isn't happy with an extra ton of payload. In any case, it was able to pull 800 kilos, which is almost the weight of the car itself. Now we try climbing that hill. It is such a low thing. I can still smell clutch, and it is pretty nasty. Let's do this. Come on, babe, let's go. Good car. I can hear a crunching noise. That can't be good. But, well... It is moving. Still moving. And that's it. The car won't go any further. That load is just way too much. That sucks. Something is burning. I gather it's the clutch. I have to use the clutch to stop, since the brakes are gone. Come on. Nope. This is just way too much load for a lotta. But that was to be expected. With such a tiny motor, we put in so much extra weight. Of course it ain't going anywhere. Poor thing is up in smoke. Come on now. It's on its way. Awesome. We made it uphill. Nope, all it can do is stop. It won't set off uphill. Well, what can you do? It's too much? This ain't no commas after all. Carefully rolling back. And that's it. Let's call this a day. Enough torturing the car. That smell, dude. You like that aroma? So here's what's up, fellas. Extra load is actually a great way to increase traction on a rear-wheel drive car. However, just make sure not to overcook it. Okay, so 
Some people knew, I'm sure, but some probably didn't, that you can simply load the back end of your car and increase your traction. It does actually work. But make sure not to get too carried away. You do waste fuel, put stress onto your suspension components. That said, load your cars, drive around and uh, search for your grip and just enjoy yourselves. And well, that's all I have for you. You saw it all for yourselves. Comment, give us a big thumbs up. Send in your suggestions, we'll read them. And tell us what you think about this extra load thing. Especially if you... And if you know which car requires how much load out of personal experience, hit us up, we'll happily read through your feedback. To see if we have any common ground on the whole 50 to 100 kilo thing. Maybe 20 would have been enough, I mean, we're genuinely curious what you have to say. And that's all I have for you fellows. Again, watch us, subscribe, send in those comments and suggestions, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.